I'm incredibly excited and nervous to bring you CS-183E lecture number 12, Crossing the Chasm. CS-183E for edit, Crossing the Chasm. This one lecture, this one video is entirely worth your cost of tuition. It's worth so much because this is still an issue for Silicon Valley. This is still a real problem. And this is a problem that was first identified and nomenclated and cited and sourced by V. Jeffrey Moore. He wrote this book in 1991. I realize this is far before you guys were even born. Not by much, but still before you were born. This is still a problem. And this is the reason why the startup that you're working on, it's dead. And the reason was the chasm was not crossed. The chasm was not crossed. So in this lecture, we're going to actually cross the chasm for that dead cadaver startup that we are practicing on. We're going to uh, execute some of these uh, basic business recipes in crossing the chasm. Now, not to sound like a cocky bastard, which I am guilty of once in a while, but this will work every time, 95% of the time. Yeah, that's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be from Ricky Bobby, uh, Talladega Nights. Uh, and even though I'm regurgitating and copy-pasting Will Ferrell, that does not make it less true. So, crossing the chasm. So, this is the, the chasm, and this is, in essence... Uh, a PhD thesis. And the reason I call it a PhD thesis is not because I want to do anything with my bachelor's degree, but because I want to convey and uh, transfer knowledge that my mentor, Mark McCormick, gave me. Mark McCormick is the author of What They Don't Teach You at Harvard Business School. So, to go over the chasm, this is uh, where the nerds buy, this area right here. This section right there is where the visionaries buy. That's the chasm. Then in this area, in this area right here, the pragmatists are buying. This is where conservative people are buying. And this is considered Main Street. So uh, when normal people, pragmatists, and when conservatives buy, that's Main Street. And then the skeptics and the naysayers, they buy here. Skeptics here, naysayers here. So that's crossing, that's the chasm on the other side. Now, the reason that we're editing the startup is that startup is dead. And we are going to cross the chasm by working inside of the chasm, doing something that Paul Graham wrote about, which is what Altair Basic, is this the Microsoft of? What Altair Basic is this the Microsoft of? And so this is the happiness. This is happiness. This is people. And that penis looking shape is what Altair Basic is this the Microsoft of? Here it's labored uber black because as you guys historically may know or may not know, Uber also crossed the chasm from the right by focusing on black cars. And Uber Black wasn't called Uber Black, it was just called Uber Cab. And all they did was black Lincoln town cars. They didn't do cabs, they only did black town cars. And the reason that this is the main, this is this wider curve here, okay? This is something that's widely popular amongst many people and that's the Westin Hotel, that's Google. And up here is Taxi, where it's not popular with anybody. People still use it, and it's just not, it doesn't make people super happy. And the concept here is focusing on making a small group of people, read the essay, Paul, what they don't, what, what Altair Basic is this a Microsoft of, Paul Graham where you're focusing on making a small group of people incredibly ecstatically happy. So this is happiness, and this is uh, number of people. So it's a small number of people that you're making incredibly happy. So what you're trying to do in crossing the chasm, and this applies 
hugely. And I don't know if Paul Graham just doesn't read Jeffrey Moore or doesn't connect with Jeffrey Moore or is competitive with Jeffrey Moore, but this is the Jeffrey Moore diagram underneath. You've got the chasm. So you actually want to put the penis area, okay, into the vagina area. Not all the way in, but just into this little sliver. Let's just call this the, the, the special spot, the Grafenberg spot. So, and I'm not even joking here, and I'm being 100% serious. So you're trying to focus your, you're trying to take two people, Paul Graham's book, what, Paul Graham's essay, what Altair Basic is this a Microsoft of, and you are connecting it to Jeffrey Moore's Cross the Chasm from the Right. Now, hopefully I haven't lost any of you, and I'm going to backtrack a little bit here to go into what exact vertical you're going to be practicing in. And this is a pattern, a pattern that I recognize, a pattern that you're going to be replicating, and then you're going to be pattern iterating. You're going to be pattern iterating this exact pattern which is you're gonna be focusing on just selling in this area, in the main street area, where you're just gonna literally be three CS majors that are going to be doing sales and selling. Now to also backtrack, you're combining, you're combining the chasm, you're combining the chasm by crossing from the right, you're adding another, you're adding in another thing, another brand, another uh, adopted item that connects. So up above, you have the penis, okay? I hate to call it the penis, let's call it the cigar. So the cigar inserts into the chasm, the cap, the, the, the female part of the entrepreneurship. So here you've got a large brand, and coincidentally, a Westin hotel, people love staying at a Westin. So you host an event at a Westin or across the street from the convention center. So this, these are things that are helped to men, mean to, to get adoption by trying to do these two simultaneously spending effort into this chasm area. This chasm area where, where you're massaging it and you're attacking that chasm angle from something that's adopted. So here... Uh, the Westin Hotel is a rebrand from the West, the West Urn Hotel, which at the time was not super adopted because it wasn't super popular, not like it is right now. And what the Westin did to cross the chasm back when it was the West Urn is they focused on making a small group of people really happy by doing something called the Heavenly Bed. Uh, FTC disclosure, I make money from the heavenly bed because I was the supermodel for it. But a piece of furniture had previously never been promoted as a uh, item that was an anchor, that was an attractive thing to bring in. So when you're doing CS-183E and you're trying to edit that dead startup, your focus is solving the problem of crossing the chasm and that problem is that chasm doesn't get crossed. So you're using a litany of, of business tips. You're using a sequence of business recipes. And this is one of them. You host it at a Weston. Uh, a company called Salesforce held their first user conference inside of a Weston. Now, maybe you didn't love Salesforce or didn't believe in cloud CRM, which is uh, here. Maybe you don't believe in cloud CRM. But you definitely think that the Westin is a really nice hotel, and that's why Salesforce held their first user conference inside of the Westin St. Francis. True story. So if you're taking notes, this is where you want to be at with this next solution. This next solution is you want to focus on an incredibly small vertical. You want to focus on on the cigar area, you want to focus on the cigar area of that startup. You want to focus, uh, it's an incredibly narrow, incredibly focused uh, vertical, which is that Uber Black, that customer CRM, 
that very uh, particular focused thing. Now, there's another phrase, you wanna write this down. It's called customer development cycle. I know I'm DJing in another mentor, Steve Blank, but the shoe fits and it's important. Now, customer development cycle is typically focused on this part. You don't just wanna focus on this part. You actually wanna focus on the larger uh, adopted area and then later on customize it and that's exactly how to cross the chasm from the right. Let me repeat that. So you wanna focus on a larger area, okay? And whatever that larger area is, you wanna to start to sell and get a couple of small accounts. And then those small accounts are gonna ask you to do a small customization, which is how you then go from here in doing sales as three CS majors, doing sales for a dead entity, and that's why CS183 is so powerful, so so unique, is that you're you're literally doing something that has not been done before. Jeffrey Moore hasn't even written about it. He wrote a book about escape velocity, and that entails fighting gravity. This leverages gravity like your Bruce Lee, a five foot five Chinese guy who can kick a lot of butt, being a hundred pounds. I should know because. 105 pound Filipino girl could kick my butt and I'm like 6'5", 222 pounds. That's the solution right there, is you wanna focus on something incredibly tight and incredibly uh, small as your initial market. That's the money shot right here. So if you wanna pause at the 11 minute 46 mark, that's the money shot right there. You're looking at solution of doing what I refer to as lemonade stand and gua gua guacamole because you're going to be promoting something that exists. You're not going to be coming up with something new and that's what CS183 edit is. is E stands for edit something that is in existence. So, and to walk people through that process, this is so politically incorrect but it's so accurate. You want to help old people be less dumb. You want to help older people, okay? actually not suck as much as they're used to sucking, which is a lot because they're old and they kind of don't know. This is gonna make you giggle and laugh, okay? This is gonna make you laugh, which is this actually works. Doing a business card for Uber where you are providing a discount code and a phone number that is available anywhere. Well, I provide one and people will literally call because they can't find the app store. Help old people be less dumb. There's my Uber referral code. I text it back to them. That's my name and email. This is what they want, which is, which is adoption of, or help me get adoption of some super basic thing because normally I would call for a limo and now I am needing to open up an app and find the app store. Old people, literally, they can't find the app store. They look for it on Main Street, they look for it in the phone book, it's literally on their phone and they can't find it. So all I do is text message back, text message back the, uh, the referral code. Now, there's a sequence of these recipes, these business recipes that I've outlined that help you get sales, the first small block of sales. This first small block of sales, and these are all things that, that develop in that little chasm area. That's the sweet spot, that's the solution, is focusing on a very specific vertical for the cadaver startup that died, the founders have left it, and you are trying to get it some traction. Now, all these things, none of these things are actually the new thing, even though I'm marketing it as Cross the Chasm from the right CS183E Lecture 12. It's really completely just the old way. Tim O'Reilly, he didn't initially start with the most innovative thing. He started promoting Sun and user manuals for Sun Microsystems 
because Sun itself just was too lazy to write a really good uh, dev handbook for CS majors to use. Oracle, same thing. They innovated the database, whereas IBM was just large mainframes and slow to innovate. I don't know why large companies are so slow and so non-innovative because a small startup will always outflank and out-innovate startup. Same thing with Salesforce. And they used, literally they used the Weston Hotel to do their first user conference called Dreamforce. They initially did it as a half day thing with a lunch. And Mark Benioff knew that if you've got something innovative, because he used to work at Oracle, you've got something innovative, it, you don't want to put it at a travel lodge. You want to put the, the, the user conference in your office that you're kind of slip sliding together. No, you want to put it in a nice hotel, thus the Westin Hotel. Apple did it totally the same way. They did not invent a, a personal music player. They just focused on an incredibly specific and small vertical, and then it just grew and grew and grew, and before they know it, they had a music store. But initially, they had a music player that was incredibly uh, unique and simple. And that's how they crossed the chasm for doing a half a dozen genius things like uh, the iTunes, that's literally a music label. So hopefully these things have helped you for uh, college entrepreneurship. Um, you're editing something that's tight and uh, distinct and you want to work on it, improve it, get credit for that improvement, and then later on, dump it's a strong word, but you definitely want to leave it and you don't want to have it be your permanent thing the way that this has become my life where I help people edit their credit report and augment their FICO score. And initially it started off sort of being a joke and the money tumbles in and it's no longer a joke. So college entrepreneurship, uh, I tried to emphasize that it was a lower uh, money value and a lower, but I guess college entrepreneurship wasn't that low of a money level for Facebook who initially crossed the chasm from the right by doing a social network just for Ivy League kids uh, that wanted to meet and date. 